Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we return to the wilds of Africa with Mr. Mickey Carter, who brings us new behind-the-scenes adventures of shooting movies of Tarzan in the Dark Continent. Mr. Carter photographs Tarzan, played by Gordon Scott, wrestling barehanded with an 18-foot python, lassoing and riding a giraffe, and swimming in a river crowded with hippopotami. Hollywood goes to Africa with the cartoon king in Kenya. <laughs> television passport to the exciting, colorful world of adventure. Brought to you each week by the Ralston Purina Company of Checkerboard Square, St. Louis. Makers of Rice Checks, Wheat Checks, Rye Crisp, and Instant Ralston, the famous foods in the checkerboard packages. And here, speaking for Ralston, is that celebrated cereal salesman, Lee Goodman. Here is a scientific demonstration of why Wheat Chex are a grown-up cereal with a flavor made primarily to please grown-ups and kids who want to be like grown-ups. Let me demonstrate. Cereal Y, like some cereals made primarily for children, is sweet and sugary. And so when it tries to enter the trap of anyone a little older, it encounters considerable resistance. However, Cereal X, Wheat Chex, has real grown-up flavor, the flavor of whole grain wheat. And here is super scientific proof that wheat checks act twice as nice to any trap. And once you start eating them, you can't stop. In fact, you can eat wheat checks until they come out of your ears. You see, wheat checks have real whole wheat flavor, made to gratify grown-ups and children with grown-up tastes. And when you fix your wheat checks up with sugar and milk, these bite-sized biscuits of toasted wheat stay crisp and crunchy the whole bowl through. Demonstrate them inside yourself. Wheat checks, the grown-up cereal from Checkerboard Square. And now, here to begin tonight's true story adventure is Jack Douglas. There was a time when the making of a Tarzan movie required every trick known to Hollywood's make-believe geniuses. When Tarzan leaped from a tree, he actually fell two feet in a pile of sawdust. But then the public's demand for honesty and authenticity, even in fictional movies, swept Hollywood. And one of the first to heed the call was Mr. Saul Lesser, who several years ago ordered that all future Tarzan films would be shot in their actual locales in Africa. Well, now this required a Tarzan with courage, and a photographer to follow in his footsteps. In Gordon Scott, Saul Lesser found his Tarzan. And in tonight's guest, he found the man who was willing to follow Tarzan anywhere, anytime. Here, making his second appearance on our series with Tarzan's latest exploits, Mr. Mickey Carter of Palm Springs, California. Hi, Mr. Carter. Hi, Jack. Nice to see you again. It's wonderful to be back with you. Well, now, we will remember your last visit to Tarzan's Africa. How did this particular journey differ? What was different about the assignment? Well, every trip is different in Africa, Jack. But we did uh, endeavor this time to get Tarzan in the picture and on as many animals as possible. I see. Well, now, Mr. Carter, you being a professional photographer, I'm sure you know that when these big Hollywood studios go abroad, I think they call it on location abroad, invariably it becomes a, an enormous spectacle with hundreds and hundreds of people involved. Just how big was your company? We had a crew of four, Jack. Four? <laughs> That's right. Uh, my wife, Peggy, she's been going with me. She does a script girl and a lot of stills, and Colonel Mazze, he does sound for us. We have a director and myself, and we all double in brass for everything. But four is the entire four is company. Four crew. And then, of course, we pick up our white hunters and porters over in Africa. I see. And Mr. Carter, why did you pick on Kenya as the locale for this newest Tarzan uh, venture? Well, Jack, you know uh, Kilimanjaro is famous, and below it is one of the greatest game pockets in the world. So that we camped there and worked there a great deal. And there's also some beautiful waterfalls very near there, which we filmed. We're landing at Nairobi, Kenya Colony, and the gateway to all this vast game that we film. Often we transfer to a small plane, 
to do reconnaissance so we can check up on the movement of game and the large herds. We're also going to look for a nice campsite which we'll set up when Tarzan arrives for filming the pictures. So we take off in this little plane and you come on along, see what we can find from the air. Here we're on the move over a herd of zebra. They're moving mighty fast. They're all zebra, Mr. Carter? Yes, these are all zebra and actually they're migrating and we just picked them off here. Here's a lone warthog going a little hog wild. We follow him down and then swing away from him, swing onto these black cape buffalo. Would we have to assume that these animals are running because of the airplane motor, Mr. Carter? Well, it has a little to do with it, sure, because they hear the motor. And we watch a herd of elephants being rounded up by the big ball. Notice how they circle to protect their young. Then we follow along here. We watch some hippos, they diving into their muddy pool. Well, now, these are helicopter yes, scenes here, aren't they? Yes, our helicopter had arrived. We switched back and forth between the helicopter and our small plane. Then we break out over thousands of pink flamingos tapering in the sunlight. Really, it's quite a sight because the whole water is pink with flamingos. We're following on down the Zambezi River and see one of Africa's mightiest spectaculars, Great Victoria Falls. Here, the whole Zambezi dumps into a gorge hundreds of feet deep and it roars like thunder. From aerial point of view, that even Livingston was deprived of. <laughs> I imagine he was pretty amazed, Jack, when he saw that. We're going to go on safari. We're getting ready to set up our camp right at the base of Kilimanjaro. We get our camp all ready, clear the grass, pound in our steak. This is what we call really a deluxe setup. Well, here's our little crew, Tarzan, who is Gordon Scott, you know. And it's myself, and this is Peggy, my wife. She does a lot of the still camera work. And we have our usual panhandlers and followers around <laughs> camp. You give a baboon an inch, and he'll move right in with you, bag and bag. <laughs> oh, boy, Jack, they're the greatest muggers in Africa. You know, they act like a Hollywood hopeful trying to get discovered. <laughs> but they can be vicious. By golly, you know, a couple of baboons can tear a leopard apart. But here's a mother with her day-old baby. You know, I followed her for two days trying to film the birth of this baby, and she fooled me, Jack. She had it up on a limb during the night. They're very afraid of leopards, and that's why they do that. But anyway, mother's love's the same everywhere. Papa here, he's nonchalant about it all. He's rubbing a sore eye. I guess he got in a fight with Chewy the leopard. Tarzan's getting ready to work. We're going to film scenes with a beautiful cheetah, which we call Simi. We found this cheetah when it was dying beside a road, a little bundle of fur, and we fed him with an eyedropper. And here's Simi now, seven feet long and weighs 170 pounds. They're the fastest animal on Earth. They've been clocked at 70 miles an hour. Every Hollywood picture has to have a menace. Ours was in the form of this black cobra. He's about eight feet long. <laughs> Naturally, I want to do a good job, so I got as close to him as possible to get him hooding up in front of the camera. And while I'm doing that, Tarzan's playing with an 18-foot python. <laughs> we had a little trouble here. I had tape around this python's mouth so he wouldn't bite Tarzan. But the tape came off in the water, <laughs> unknown to us. And oh, no. Yeah, the snake bit right through his wrist. Tarzan grabbed the snake, and the snake grabbed Tarzan. But Tarzan kept after him. He finally caught him. He lost the first round, but we got the scenes anyway. A snake like this, he'll weigh up 90 or 100 pounds, and it's like trying to lift a sack of cement. They make a nice neck piece. <laughs> the main thing is don't let them get too many coils around you. And these wildebeest and all the animals, my job is to try to film Tarzan with them, hobnobbing with the wild folks, and some of them just are downright unneighborly. <laughs> they won't cooperate. Now watch Tarzan, whom you've seen ride wild animals in cartoons, do it in reality. The script called for Tarzan to enter the native village to make an impression. The Hollywood boys left it up to Gordon and me. 
we figured this would be the way. How much more impressive can you get than riding into town majestically on an elephant? The kids all love elephants and they love Tarzan. That elephant stands higher than the village, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. When we got this giraffe picked out, did you ever try to ride a giraffe? No, and I don't know of anyone else who no. ever has. The script called for Tarzan to escape from the villains and race for help as fast as he could. Some writer back in Hollywood decided that Tarzan could get help fastest by riding on a long-legged giraffe. Now the problem for us is to first figure out how to catch him, and once having caught him, then how to ride him. No halter or no saddle or anything here, and the giraffe slants about 45 degrees. You gotta watch out for those front feet. A giraffe can kick a land to pieces. So Tarzan has to keep his distance. And our friend, the giraffe here, he kept pulling Tarzan into the bushes. But here we go. We're off at Serengeti. <laughs> and when I say off, I mean off. We just couldn't seem to stay on that guy. And we? I told, it was Gordon Scott yeah, having Gordon all was, trouble. Oh, he took a bad one here. We had to throw a bucket of water on him here. Gosh, he looks he passed up cold. We told him to quit because, after all, actors cost money and <laughs> giraffes are a little cheaper, see? But well, now, he here was he actually goes. hurt there, wasn't he? Yeah, he was hurt badly, but he was determined to ride that giraffe, and here he did, Jack. He broke him in, took him right off and rode him off. And you know what I know a funny thing? That darn giraffe rode right back into where we started filming from. Here's an old buffalo. They're a little bit different. You just hop on them. They're much slower, much more comfortable. But you can.